Welcome, everybody, to the Monday Mastermind. We are so glad that you are here. And if you're from America, welcome to the Monday Mastermind. I don't know why you guys do that. You know, I've got, always got to go back and forth between the way that I speak. If I speak to Americans long enough, I start talking like them, and I've got to correct myself and go back here. You know, because we drive on the left hand side of the road and you guys think you drive on the right hand side of the road but it's actually it should be the wrong side of the road but it's okay i remember when i was driving with pops in vegas and he was driving on the right hand side of the road i kept on thinking a car was going to hit the vehicle because it is so different you know I, I don't even know if i if i went to america and had my driver's license if i had one to actually sit there driving on the right hand side because it's got to be a huge adjustment i'm sure i mean can you imagine pops driving on the on the left hand side of the road and now you got to figure out all the rules and jamie and katie man that must be crazy i had i had a left hand drive car years ago dave it was a chevy station wagon back in uh the late back in uh yeah early 70s and how did that go did you manage to drive that okay that was hilarious i got freaked out because i didn't know if somebody was going to open up their passenger or their driver's door when I was driving down the road and hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got, I got to say though, um, I mean that, that, that can probably handle, I mean, I know that the only thing changes that the, 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 the gear shift is on the other side where you're sitting. Somebody might actually said to me, gee, are the pedals the other way around as well? <laughs> I'm thinking, no, <laughs> I certainly hope not because that would be a catastrophe. Um, but I, I'm actually thinking about driving on that left hand side when you've got to obey those uh, instead of the right, you've got to drive on the left. I mean, it's got to be that's got to be the weirdest thing in the world. That's why I feel if I ever go overseas and I stay there for a while, and there's no ways I'm driving, <laughs> not for a few years anyway. So I'd have to learn how to drive on a farm or something for like a couple of years before I be brave enough to go and drive in the city. My goodness. But with that being said, and that out of the way, we're so glad that everybody's here. Uh, you know, I had some really, really um, bad news the other day. I had um, my my vape hit the my vape my vape went dead, and I had to go and get myself a new one. Now it's a much shiny one. It's all shiny, everything. So it's got a little a little trigger on this thing. It goes vroom vroom the whole time. So I'm very happy about that. Um, had to shout out some money for that, but it was worth it. I really enjoyed it, but I'm back and it was the craziest six hours of my life, not being able to vape. So, uh, I finally got over that pump and everything's hunky dory. So with that being said, now that we are all here and, um, I'm going to be uh, introducing our panelists, we have pops, um, all the way somewhere in the States because he's traveling around the States with, um, Katie and their RV. Uh, Pops, do you mind sharing? How's it going with you? Where are you? And what's your favorite color? Um, ocean blue is my favorite color. I'll start with that. Or turquoise, depending on what country I'm in. <laughs> and uh, I am in, in the United States, yet we are in um, well, the southern eastern side of Florida. We're about 30 miles from the Atlantic Ocean in a in a public campground um this place is just awesome they have it's it's four horse riders to bring their horses in they have stables um and paddocks uh trails they have foot trails as well and uh it's just it, this is one of the first and only free sites that and it's free that the state provides it for these folks that there's actual showers and flush toilets Typically, it's an outhouse when you're in public lands. This is amazing. I might decide to move in. It's just great. And I love Florida anyway, so this would be right up my alley. Uh, things are great. The weather is good. Uh, we're making money somewhere. And uh, we're making new friends every day. That's awesome. That's awesome. And... Uh just um, on the subject of meeting people, I just wanted to say hello to Joe Kenzie, Robert, Maria, David Roden, everybody on this um, uh, 
uh, webcasts that are watching right now, I want to say hello to you. Hope you're having a fantastic day. And um, with that being said, uh, we will go over to your uh, counterpart, uh, Miss Katie Stage. But I got to say, I want to ask Katie this question. If somebody says to you, where do you live? You have to go, oh, wait, I'm in an RV. How, do, how does that conversation go? <laughs> That's actually pretty good. Um, I always say it's, I'm born and raised Minnesotan and now full-time RVer. That's all I say. And then usually, actually 98% of the time, people are like, what's an RVer? Because <laughs> they have no idea. So then I have to send a GIF or a picture with a big RV and something funny. And they're like, oh, I get it. I want that lifestyle. I'm jealous in a good way, you know, weird stuff like that. <laughs> but, oh, I did want to add, without you asking, but I'm still going to add, that my favorite color is green, but my favorite color to say is aquamarine because it's just so aquamarine. It's just so cool. Yeah, I suppose that's very good. And I got to say, um, now just let me let me just say, I do know what burgundy is, and I do know what all those fancy colors are. But when I was growing up, I always was struggling with those words like burgundy. And I'm thinking, why don't you just say stuff like dark red? or uh, light blue, or dark blue, or green. Why do you gotta come up with these fancy names that I don't know anything about? I'm a simple guy, things red, I don't want the, I, the, the, the exact color. There are weird, weird colors with weird, weird names, and that drives me bizarre. We can, I don't we want can go on, we can go on forever. My sister painted the kitchen like unicorn pink. Yeah, I'm okay. like, it's not pink, it's not white, it's like a hint of pink on like it's like eggshell but pink or or whatever those colors are <laughs> yeah yeah I'm, I'm just um burgundy what the heck who came up with that oh it's burgundy let's just make that right now and call it that color pops just said uh, anyway. uh how about unicorn poop and i said well that would be called rainbow oh yes poop rainbows of course with sparkles uh, oh. Well, I, got, I, I want to share this with everybody, and uh, just before we get on to our main uh, guest speaker tonight, because Jamie is going to be talking tonight, and he is going to be sharing with us his story, and uh, that's going to be ex super exciting to hear, and I've been a while that we've heard Jamie, and I'm, uh, I want to hear about it. But i got to tell you guys, my heart nearly jumped out of my throat the other day, my bunny Bruno is in the opposite room to me, and every now and then, because as you know, he has a disability. He's got spastic or palsy, so he battles to walk. And every now and then, I'll go in there and I'll say, "Hey, Bruno, do you want some coffee or um, you know a fake cappuccino?" Uh, you know, I say fake cappuccino because it's not a not a real one anyway. But anyway, I'll ask him what he wants. So he sends me this message. Now, normally, when you send me a message, most people would say, "Can you come over? Can you please come here?" Not Bruno. He goes question mark, question mark, question mark, and that means come over here. For some reason, I have to guess what that means, but he tells me these interpretations as we go. He's got a ton of them. I've been encouraging him to write a book with a glossary on the back because not many people are doing gears or are good doing gear, and I'll tell you what that is later, but he speaks like that. He just makes up stuff and it sticks. It's not like he changed it all the time. He knows exactly what he says. It's just the way he talks. Anyway, he sends me these question marks to come over, and I wait like five minutes. I'm not in a hurry to go because that's not super urgent. If it's super urgent, then it's like a smiley face with a clapping hand or something. But anyway, five minutes passed, and I go and I open up the door and I walk into the next room. Now you got to understand, Bruno's room is dark. There's no light. And Bruno is standing by the door. He is standing by the door. He's not very tall. He's just by the door. So I walk into this person. And I swear I did a backflip on a ballerina. I don't know what the heck I did. But you know, like when you get that fright and it takes like 10 or 20 years off your life, I nearly, I nearly died. It was crazy. Uh, so, um, you know, I was shaking for like five minutes after that encounter. But that was that was my crazy crazy day the other day. So I wanted to share that with everybody, just so you have something to chuckle about. 
Uh, anyway, I hope you got a beverage. I hope you got something that you can drink, be, um, something because we are going to be listening to Jamie Shaw. Now, Jamie is an upper guy in the online marketing industry. He's also got his own offline business. And Jamie is going to be sharing with us his story today. So, Jamie, video over to you, buddy. The floor is yours. Take it away. Oh, man, Dave, I always hate telling my story, but, you know, and I've always started my story off that. You know, I started door-to-door -door sales, but I've been, you know, I've had a week to prepare for this and I haven't prepared, but, you know, whoever prepares for their story, you know, and I actually thought about it all week, you know, and actually I didn't start my entrepreneurial journey at door-to-door -door sales. I actually started when I was about 13 or 14 years old and I got my first mowing job and I, I had like eight mowing jobs in town, you know, so I'd go in town all week and in the summertime and mow like eight yards a week, you know, and then uh, for local farmers, I had a, a hay crew, two, two other guys besides me, and we'd go put up hay and straw for other farmers all summer long too. So that's kind of where I started my entrepreneurial journey because my great grandparents were entrepreneurs. They owned a restaurant in the town I grew up in. And then later, you know, as I was, as I come into the picture, they had sold the restaurant and bought a hotel and, my grandmother made everything homemade, you know, and took care of the the patrons that come in and, and stayed at the hotel. And uh, I still have the the sign in book where they come in and sign in at the hotel. And guess whose name's in that? I'll give you a hint. He's the tallest man in the world. Robert Wadlow stayed in that hotel. Robert Wadlow was eight foot one inch tall or eight foot two inches tall, and he stayed in that ho in that hotel. And his books in the registry, or his name's in the registry. And my gra great grandmother used to tell me the story of how she had to put two beds together so he, they were long enough for him to sleep in, which I thought was really cool. So, you know, so I grew up in Central Illinois, lived here all my life, uh, played you know high school football, played baseball, played basketball. You know, I was I was a jock at heart. Um, I wasn't real. I wasn't a popular person because. Uh, my dad had some problems with law as I grew up, you know, so <laughs> he, he liked to sell, you, we call it medicinal nowadays, and it wasn't medicinal back then, <laughs> you know, so, you know, so he got in trouble for that, you know, so I got the bad rap for that all the time as growing up as a kid, so I had kind of turned into fi a fighter in school to protect my, my name and my my family name and stuff, so, you know, as I grew up, you know, I had problems with my anger issues and stuff because of those those things and stuff so you know when I graduated high school I went off to the military and you know I really like getting to go see all the world in the military the only thing I hated was getting orders shouted at you all the time you know and so I loved you know kind of loved getting what I did in the military I was a crew chief on air refueler so we took off and refueled bombers and f-16s and stuff in the air and it, that was pretty cool but getting shouted shouted orders all the time that wasn't really cool and it really wasn't my cup of tea so i got out and i come back home and you know work some odd jobs here and there signing crew stuff like that you know and uh, i decided to go back to school in computer-aided drafting because that was the field my dad had gone into is drafting and uh you know in the late 80s when i come home from the military i think it was 89 when i come home from the military um, computers and drafting and stuff was and com drafting on the computer was really big so I went to school for that and in the meantime you know why I was in school and stuff I picked up door-to-door -door sales I answered an ad in a newspaper for door-to-door -door, door -door sales and it was selling rainbow vacuum cleaners you had to go through the skit and learn how to sell a rainbow vacuum cleaner to somebody and do a demonstration and pick up all the dirt and show how much dirt was in their carpet and everything and if they bought one from you I said, you had to go up and shake their hand and say, welcome to Rainbow, like they did in the movie uh, about Facebook, you know, and he says, welcome to Facebook. And it's kind of the same, same theory there, you know. So, and, you know, I, in the first couple of weeks I did Rainbow Vacuum Cleaners, I think I had 10 showings and uh, I sold two of them, you know. So I thought I'd made it, you know, I made like 300 bucks commission on both of them, you know, so I had 600 bucks in my pocket, you know. Cause those things sell for like 1200 bucks or something like that, you know? And, uh, 
so I thought I made it, you know, then I, that was like my first week, you know, I had five showings, I think it was, and I sold two. So that wasn't too bad. I sold two. Next week I had five showings. I sold none. The third week I had five showings. I showed none. Like this is not for me. I can't do this. So I went on to steak knives, you know, and, uh, cutlery. Then, you know, uh, then I kind of give up on it for a little while. You know, I, I got done with school and I focused on getting a job in the field I went to. Well, it never really panned out for what I went to school for the, the first time. And, uh, you know, I met my wife. I'm going to skip a big part of my story that, you know, this panel knows about. And I don't think it's important. I mean, it is important part of my story, but I don't want to tell talk about it tonight. I've had enough going on this week that I don't want to talk about that part. But, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, I met my wife, you know, and I was in a pretty bad position when I met my wife. And, you know, she's been my angel on my shoulder. She kind of picked up the pieces and put me back together. You know, I was I was struggling with life, struggling with me. And, you know, she put me back together, you know, and I, I went on to back to school. She put me back to school and I got a second degree in computer drafting. And then I went on and got a bachelor's degree in technical management. And you now I. I kind of landed in a career in a job of computer aid drafting, designing highways. And I specialized, I started in environmental engineering, which I hated, you know, because you get to see all the contaminated stuff that we put into this earth. And that just wasn't for me. And, uh, you know, we did landfills and stuff like that. Underground storage tanks where gases leaked into the ground, diesel fuels leaked into the ground. You see all this contaminated soil and stuff. And it really wasn't cool. You know, so, uh, I switched over to civil engineering and that's where I kind of thrived at, you know, building highways and uh, bridges and subdivisions, stuff like that. You know, something I could physically see when I designed it and it was really cool. And, you know, along this journey, you know, I kind of focused on corporate America, you know, and then what was it 2011? I think it was, or actually 2007 was the first time 2007. I got laid off. From my job and i was off for like a good eight months well i started exploring the make money from home niche. the internet was starting to come alive you know uh different programs were out there i mean there were basic programs there was people starting to make money you know you could get on the internet and search you know luckily i didn't have a computer at the time but my dad did so i could get on the net and and search for business making opportunities and i got introduced to Quickstar, which was it is it was then, which is you know Amway today, you know, and I messed around with Amway and stuff for a little while. Went to some home parties, some home meetings, some big hotel meetings, stuff, and I thought it was really cool. It was really a good idea, but I see my parents struggle in it so much, you know, and I kind of struggled in it. And it's like, man, there's got to be a better way. So you know, I kept looking around, looking around, and I stumbled across my first network marketing company, and. Uh, I'm not going to mention its name because I'm still kind of involved with it. I, I mean, still a member of that community. I'm not active in that community, but I'm still a member of it. So, um, but they taught you how to build websites, which I went to, when I went to school for my second associate's degree, they taught me how to build websites and code in HTML. So I thought it was a cool idea. And then this company, they taught you how to build Word, WordPress websites. I'm like, this is better than, you know, hard coding everything in HTML. So I, I picked up that skill and they learned how to so taught you how to, I learned, they learned me. Yeah. I got real good English, don't I? <laughs> I went to school in central Illinois, <laughs> but they taught me how to sell ClickBank products, you know, and, uh, you know, like I said, build websites and, you know, build capture pages and lead pages and, uh, all this terminology, you know, swirling around my head. I'm trying to figure all this stuff out, you know, and actually that first company, you know, I, I did decent, you know, I made 900,000 bucks, you know, but I was in it three years before I made that, you know, so uh, it was kind of cool. And then the second company, oh, actually that was the second company. The first company I made no money in, you know, and it was, what's funny about that, the first company it's one of the systems in Pure Profit Pro that Dave talks about all the time. Um, and I just thought it was kind of funny that it was still around. But that was the second company was where I made started making some money and stuff like that. And I knew the Internet online thing could work. And 
you know, along come the third company, which is kind of a, a network marketing company, kind of an MLM, which eventually went out of business. But the three years or four years they were in business, I was in it four years, three or four years, I think. But I, I, were they around five years, Katie, or three or four years? Five years? We started in 2011. That's where yeah, 2011, and you know that is where I learned a ton of my skills. That's where I met Pat Patterson. That's where I met Katie. You know, that's where I met Dave, and that's where I met Pops. That you know, and that is where I started honing my skills. You know, I was in three weeks of that company, and I got my first sale. And I didn't have a clue what I was doing. I got my first sale. I'm like, wow, this works. You know, and and she stuck around with me for. You know several months and then she then she quit but what's funny is she's still on my email list today and she still opens every email i i send but i've even sent her personal emails personal videos she she opens them and watches them but she never responds so you know it's just kind of cool how people stick with you if they if they like you they think you got value but they're not ready to join you yet and they stick around and follow you and open everything you do but you know, I stuck with that company. I had a couple of years of struggle and stuff. And then, you know, I was frustrated and kind of mad. And I was ready to quit. And we decided to go to an event in Chicago, which I seen Laura Parrish there, but I was too scared to go up and meet her. And, and some of you in the online space know Laura Parrish. I mean, she's standing from me to here away from me. And I was too too afraid to say anything to her, you know. And I told her that when I first met her on in the company we're in with now and she said you should have just said something to me. she said i would have talked to you but if you guys know laura she's pretty awesome so and then the second event i went to nashville you know we went to chicago because chicago is a three-hour drive for us the second event was 2015 in nashville and i was struggling really bad then you know the chicago event really pumped me up and i went back into momentum and started doing some things and i made some more sales and stuff and uh then I got hit the low spot again, you know, the, the entrepreneur low, I was in that again and I was frustrated and stuff. And so 2015, we decided to go to Nashville and lo and behold, I'm in the smoking area. Actually, that's not the smoking area. It was Pat Patterson's office and I got to meet Pat Patterson and I just listened to his audio about his story that Monday. And this was Friday night at the event and he entered, you know, he asked me a couple questions, or he introduced himself, said, hi, I'm Pat Patterson. Are you you in Empower Network? I'm like, yes, I am. I'm like, Pat Patterson, I just listened to your story on Monday night. That was the craziest thing I've ever heard in my life. You know, I felt like I was laying on the ground next to you as you're trying to get your holst- your gun out of the holster. And he's like, you know, he thanked me and everything. I'm, and Pat's so cool, you know. And his first question out of his mouth was, were you getting results? I said, yeah, I'm getting leads and stuff. I said, I'm just hard having a hard time making sales. He said, are you making videos? I said, no, I'm scared to death to do videos. He's like, why? And these were Pat's exact words. Why? You have to get over that shit and do videos. I'm, tr- I'm promising you that you will be a star if you start making videos. I'm like, I, 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 you know, and that stuck in my head all weekend, all weekend. He's like, you know, Give me your email address. He said, I'll send, send you a link to my new show, which was Wisdom Wednesday. And when we got done with Nashville that weekend, I seen him a couple of times over the weekend, you know, and he was always there talking to me, you know, let me know how I can help you. He said, look me up on Facebook, you know, stuff like that. You know, And that's how Pat is. He'd give you a shirt off his back if he had to. And uh, so I was really kind of cool. You know, I come to Wisdom Wednesday and met Dave and Katie and, uh, I think Pops was in the chat, so we got to interact, you know, and I started interacting. I started asking questions. I started asking. They had this thing called stump the panel. I did my damnedest to stump the panel. I think I did one time, but, you know, it was fun. It helped me get interactive with the group. It helped me be uh, proactive, you know, and ask questions, come up with questions the week before. So when Wednesday come around, I had questions to stump the panel, you know, and then, Dave, Dave invited me to 24 hour marketing mastermind. I thought, okay, this is cool. So here I am on another webinar and I did the same thing on it. I just played, I just asked all kinds of questions, you know, and I played it off, you know, I'm asking for the newbies. No, I was asking for me because I was stumped. You know, I, 
I always told them I was asking for the newbies in case they didn't know but that I knew the answer. But really, I wanted to hear it for myself. But that's how we learn. We ask questions. We don't want to look foolish by saying it's for us. So we say it's for somebody else. But in all reality, it was for me. And it helped me grow. And it helped me become a monster commenter in and, and both hangouts, you know, and they recognized me for that. And then 2016, I went back to Nashville and uh, I met, got to hang out with Pops and Katie live and got to hang out with Pat Patterson again. I almost got kicked out of a restaurant because Pat was harassing the waitress. <laughs> he, he says it's me all the time, but it was really Pat. You know, he was harassing the waitress, you know, and there was a few other people there that were, you know, it was a Jack Daniels bar and grill, I think, in, in Nashville at, uh, oh, at, uh, was it Red Rock? Grand Ole Opry. Oh, that one, yeah. No, that, that would, it was Grand Ole Opry, uh, Grand Ole, yeah. the name of the hotel. Yeah. But it was right next oh, to the Grand Ole Opry. Gaylord? And, uh, Gaylord. Yeah, Gaylord Hotel and Resort, you know, and it was a beautiful place, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on, and, you know, it was a pretty good meal. And we had a lot of conversation going on and stuff like that. And, you know, and Pat and Katie both were on me. I think Pops was on me, too. Are you making videos? You making videos? I'm like, yeah, I'm making videos. I'm not making as many as I should, but I'm making videos. And, you know, then we had some good masterminding and stuff going on. And, you know, and we all had a good time. And, you know, what's cool about hanging around with, you know, Katie knows everybody. Pat knows everybody. Pat is not a stranger to anybody. You know, so hanging out with them, I got to meet, you know, David Wood. I got to meet Mars Burden, which is extremely tall. You know, um, I'm not a tall guy. You know, I'm only five foot nine. And you got to look up at both of them guys. David Wood actually had to to bend down and hug me because I'm so damn short. <laughs> you know, so, you know, and then who else? We met? I got pictures with Lawrence, Lawrence Tam and Desmond Soon and uh, uh, Justin Varengia and you know, people like that, big people in the marketplace, you know, and I got to meet them, but, you know, and past events, I was scared to meet them kind of people well, with Pat, you know, they walk, he walks right up to him, starts talking to him. And then all of a sudden you're there meeting him. And it's like, it's too late to be afraid. Now you're right in the middle of the, the action. So you might as well step up and introduce yourself to everybody, you know? So which Desmond soon, you know, if you've ever met him, I got, I went to meet him and I got a half hour lecture of what my bottom line was. And I had no clue what my bottom line was, but by the time I got done talking to Desmond soon, I, what, I knew what my bottom line was and where I need to be, <laughs> you know, and that's the beauty of knowing people and, you know, meeting people. We go to these events, not to be sold and stuff. We go to meet people, to network with people, to grow our influence. And, uh, that's, you know, what we're doing on Facebook. We're growing our influence. We're meeting people, um, expanding our audience. And people are so afraid to do that, you know. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, I'll, I'll move on from that, you know. And hanging out with Pops and Katie and Dave and Pat, you know, helped me really grow. And, you know, one day Pat or Dave asked me to be on the show with him, you know. I, I thought it was a great honor. I'd known I'd grown enough, you know. I'd talk with Katie, you know, because she was my sponsor and I'd say, you know, I'm feeling this and this. And she'd, she'd never give me good response. She'd say, welcome to the next level. So I knew I was growing and she was, she was helping me grow. She just wouldn't, she was letting me grow on my own. She wasn't kicking me to grow faster. She was letting me grow at my own pace. And which that's, a, that's cool of a sponsor, not to just push you here, buy this stuff here. I want you to buy this here. I want you to buy this. And she just gradually pushed me in the direction I needed to go. And, and Dave and Pat and Pops all did the same thing, you know, and I grew into kind of the person I wanted to be. And this year, 2007, well, at the end of 2017, this year's 2018, I kind of took Dave's advice and started focusing on what I was good at. And which is computer repair. I, I've owned a, a computer repair business since 2007, you know, and I've averaged, you know, about $3,000 a year. And this year, I think I did like $8,000 just by taking Dave's advice because from, and he told me this in like September, like end of August, beginning of September. And 
I think I made right at between five and eight thousand dollars at the end of the year. I have I haven't even started on my taxes yet, but just my invoices I know that I've got copies of. I think the last time I looked at it, it was right around eight thousand. And that's just fixing computers. That's all I all I did was just fix computers. And I think I designed one website. So that accounts for a thousand bucks right there. One website I designed. Um, but most of it's just fixing computers. And you know what? I'm happy go lucky because I'm doing what I love to do. You know, so at the end of the year I decided I needed to invest. Katie turned me on to this. Making, you know, that that I would be a good coach. I'm good at teaching people. I'm good at getting my message out there that I would be a good coach. So I invested in a life coaching program and an LP uh, practitioner certificate and an NLP master's practitioner. I'm almost done with the NLP practitioner. I'm done with the life coaching. I still have some work in the workbooks and discovered along the way that by Katie giving me the nudges that I need to work on me. And I knew I needed to work on me. And she wasn't saying that I need to work on me and fine tune my teaching ability. She said uh, she was saying I needed to work on me and fine tune my coaching abilities because if I could fine tune my coaching abilities, I would be an awesome coach. And that's why I jumped into these courses and took them, you know, because 2017, until I got a little direction, I kind of felt I was all over the place. I felt on the workshops I was giving away the farm and then I was drained and not doing enough work for me. And, you know, I wanted to do but more of me and work on coaching and stuff like that in 2018. So that's what I've been focused on this year. You know, you know I'm not worried about you know, being a millionaire, if it happens, it happens. If it don't, it don't, you know, who cares? You know, as long as I got a comfortable living and my family's taken care of, that's all that matters to me. As long as I can help somebody out with their problem and work them through a strategy and, or get them unstuck from something that's holding them back. You know, that's all that matters to me. I help one person today, you know, I help one person tomorrow. That's all that matters. You know, give them back to the community that's helped me. Uh, all, all our community knows, you know, if they have a problem with websites or stuff like that, you know, Dave messaged me Sunday at what I think it was with a computer pro, uh, problem. Actually, I didn't have a solution for him, but he did message me. <laughs> but, you know, a lot of people don't have that in the community. They get in a community and it's like, buy this, buy that, buy this, buy that. You know, and our community is totally different. It's about raising each other up. It's about encouraging each other. It's about chipping away the rough edges and uh, helping you grow as a person, you know, so my journey's not complete. You know, my journey's just getting started. Future's not written. Yesterday's over with. I can't fix or change anything that happened yesterday. All I can do is live for the rest of the day and start tomorrow brand new. You know, so anybody got any questions? You know, I, uh, I'm going to say, carry on, carry on, Katie. I'll speak off this. Sorry, I didn't. There's probably a lag. I didn't know you uh, unmuted, Dave. Uh, I just wanted to say real quick, uh, Jamie, is um, I think your book title should be Chip Away the Rough Edges. Chip Away the Rough Edges. <laughs> I think so. That could be your thing. <laughs> I, that just popped in my head, so I just wanted to share that. So, or, Dave? I need, or I need to get out of my yeah, way. You know, I, I want to talk a bit about uh, Jamie's um, participation and his willingness uh, to work. And you know, what I have found is that I've been, I've been, in, I've worked for other companies where people are given instructions, and even though they're getting paid and they hear instructions, they still complain. And you know, the great irony about working for yourself and doing something you love is that. You know, even when, when, you know, if I ask Jamie to do something or Jamie, you know, Jamie um, does something as because he's participating in this team. Like we have, we have a workshop that we run uh, every week. And what Jamie does is that he records it and he uploads it because he, you know, he can, he, he is the most um, capable person to do it because my connection is always up the ball and, and Pops and, and Katie's connection is always terrible as well. But, you know, he, he does it. And I know that, uh, you know, I said thank you to him, but he said, you know, Dave, you don't thank me because I love doing it. And that really encapsulates what Jamie is about. He absolutely loves what he does. And this is why we tell people 
you are uh, wanting to get into business, you've got to do something you're passionate about. All right, I don't care what it is. It could be it could be preaching. It could be commentating on on what you love. It could be, it could be anything you want. But as long as you're passionate about, it. and the one thing that we all have, the one thing, and this is something Jamie did as well. You know, he went to these events, and he did everything that these other leaders were doing and the one thing that he got involved in just like we are all involved in is my lead system pro and the reason we are involved in that is because it gives us the tools it gives us the um the the training that we need to move forward and if you want to be successful if you want to have a good um toolbox of information my lead system pro is definitely the thing to have yes it's a monthly payment but just like running any other business, like Jamie, when he's running his computer business, he's got to fund his business. There are certain things that he has. Like, you know, he he's got to pay his electricity. He's got to you know pay for everything on his house. He's got to he's got to have that every single month so he can run his business. And the same with an online business, 150 bucks a month to give you everything you need to run your own business is nothing. I mean, opening up a franchise costs hundreds and thousands of dollars just to open up the franchise, not even mentioning everything else. And this is the tool that we all have that has helped us and, and edged us to move forward, to, to go and look for other trainings because we've taken the advice of other people who are in that field. And Jamie, I've got a question for you. Sure. Um, uh, I want you to, to answer. Um, you know, a lot of us are in this industry and we get, we feel, and we feel like nothing's happening and we feel like we're having, the whole world is on our shoulders and everybody's screaming negativity at us all the time. What is the one thing that you did that kept you going at Calamity? What was the one thing that kept you moving on? One thing that really kept me moving on is the times when I made money. I knew it was possible to do it. I just had to find the secret to doing it. And the secret's not some big program, some big system. The secret's in here. And I'd find it and then I'd lose it. You know, because we we all have our ups and downs. We all have we look, all lose our way. So I'd find it, you know, like in the second company I was with, I found it for a while, you know, it's making decent money. And then I just kind of lost it. Well, I changed my focus, got shiny all ball syndrome which was a good thing because i would never would have met you guys if i hadn't you know chased the right. shiny ball and got into the next the next company you know we all meet people for we're all meant destined to meet certain people for a certain reason and i was destined to meet you guys and become a part of this group and become a part of this community and you know once i made that first dollar you know i was hooked i know it could be done it's just finding the systems that work inside of you because you have to align with with your blueprint you have to align with your your vision and your universe if you're not a lot in a, if you're out of alignment then things don't work right when you're in alignment things work right but even in the time you know, in this that you didn't make even in the time that you didn't make money what is it that kept you going what is it that kept you moving forward the possibility that i just had to find someone or some thing inside of me to get myself back in alignment i could start making money again you know a mentor a mentor does everything because you know katie and i've had one-on-ones pop or dave and i've had ones on one-on-ones you know and just sitting talking to a mentor and spark an idea and then boom all of a sudden you're back in alignment again so because you know, um, I, oh, yeah, go ahead. I just don't. I just want to don't want to train a thought here. You know, I'll I'll tell you that there was almost an entire year when I tried to make money online. I could not, for the life of me, get anyone to buy anything I put out there. I just could not do it for some reason, and uh, and the. I feel in my mind that the only thing that really kept me going was the fact that I knew it was possible. I mean, just like what Jamie is saying, like you understand that it is possible. And as you are watching this on the webcast, you need to understand that we're not lying to you, okay? We're not sitting here making up a story because we haven't 
made a, su a success of ourselves. We actually have done it, all right? We, we have done it. And I believe that the person who is going to make a success of themselves is an inner belief that is unsquashable. It's like a mustard seed. If you guys know what a mustard seed is, a mustard seed, you can take a mustard seed, plant it in the ground, and you can put a boulder on it the size that you see in those cartoons, a huge boulder on top of this mustard seed. That mustard seed will still grow around the boulder. And if you don't have a mustard seed willingness to move forward, you're going to kiss believe in yourself more than more than anybody else i feel that that that's my experience i don't know katie you want to say something hold on i gotta write down mustard seed story that was awesome okay um <laughs> one of the things uh, i wanted to ask you jamie is you were talking about how you had the shiny ball syndrome but you know it was because of that and you know, we all know how you know, destructive and distractive uh, and we can get for those shiny ball syndrome. But you got that shiny ball syndrome and you said that you joined this other company, you met us. Um, honestly, if you wouldn't have met us and you kept going on that, you know, shiny ball syndrome uh, roller coaster, I suppose, would you have kept going? Like, even if you couldn't find the community or couldn't find like even if you found like a product that you would absolutely love possibly but still had to figure like i know i i already know the answer to this but i'm i'm already feeling that you know um that you probably would just do it <laughs> you know what yeah. i mean but honestly how would you have you know i probably would have kept going because i was making money with clickbank the only bad thing with clickbank is you know you feel kind of icky if you don't own a clickbank product and you go out and promote it you know it's, and it's like and MLSP, you know, we don't have to own the products because you can go through the videos that they have in the back office of the product, and it's like you already own the product. But with ClickBank, the only way to get the real insights on the product is to go out to buy the product. You know, and some of their products aren't cheap, so but you're promoting it because you want the seventy-five percent commission off of it. So you have to be creative about how you promote stuff, and. Uh, you know, and, and you want to be authentic out there. You like uh, one was uh, uh, six pack abs. I think it was. It was one of the products I promoted, and I didn't really have to buy about it. I don't have a six pack. I have a case close to a keg. So, <laughs> you know, so I didn't. I didn't have to take pictures of me with a six pack ab. You know, I just used what they had. They already had a a bunch of pre written pre written uh, sales letters and stuff like that. So I just kind of used it. And it was such a hot product that pretty much sold itself. I think, you know, I made seven, eight hundred dollars just off that one product or not seven, eight hundred dollars, um, five or six hundred dollars off that one product because I didn't make a ton of money with that company, but I did make money with it. <clears throat> I don't want to get into what I made on everything because then I have to throw out income disclaimers and stuff like that. And we don't care. We, you know, we don't discuss what we make or stuff like that because you can out make us any day of the week all you gotta do is get in and try it but yeah i would have kept going because there was always something new in clickbank that was intriguing something that was cool i think i wasn't really looking first you know i didn't have shiny balls coming in at me all the time i was just looking for a community of people is the kind of shiny ball i was looking for i had a i had a vision of what i wanted to find in that shiny ball so i was looking at certain companies for the community and the one i found you guys in just happened to be the one that stood out you know kind of like pats you know they were the two guys that led the company were goofy and just kind of resonated with everybody so it was i first got introduced to it you know in october of 2011 i'm like ah, this ain't gonna be nothing so i didn't join and that's when they started october 2011 and uh and then I finally joined up in, uh, I think it was May of 2012, so like six months later. And it was really a good company. You know, it's too bad that the management really uh, didn't take real good to the company, you know, and, and 
got into trouble because the community in that in that company was really good and the pe- a lot of the people that come out of that community was pretty good and I mean, some of them were some spammers and some of them are still spammers and they don't know any better they're still out there spamming you know and they still don't know any better but there's a good core of people that come out of that community that are really good people so it's a um it's a great community i, I will say that and uh I, that's definitely what you know I, you know katie i have to disagree slightly on this um only because i mean just speaking from my experience but i i'm not sure that i would have carried on had i not had a community to speak to a community to encourage me and to 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 give me just my experience uh, maybe i probably would have carried on because you know in my situation it, it does get a bit tougher with everybody calling it a scam and calling it a, a this you walk into a room and suddenly everybody goes away because you're that person um, but you know, community is amazing, and the fact that we 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 can reach out and just freely reach out. I mean, you try it. Anybody watching this on a replay, you try reach out to say, "Hey, I just saw the the my mastermind. Uh, would it be possible if I chat you for a few minutes? Just try that and see what happens. And I guarantee you that you'll get a response. Just don't send something like, "Hi, how are you? Are you married? Are you single?" So, you know, oh my goodness me, that type of email drives me nuts. Be genuine in your question. I hate that. They ask me, you know, people send me a message and ask me if I'm married. What difference is, did you look at my profile? I have a picture of me and my wife on my profile. Well, hey, you know? I just yeah. wanted hey. to re- reply to Dave um, that I do believe that you would kept going. And just like I knew that Jamie would keep going, just like how I knew I kept going, just like I know that Pops keeps going because um, we're the type of people, and I know that Maria's the same way, Sonia's the same way, Jovi's the same way, <laughs> um, uh, Joe and Joe, <laughs> they're they're all the same way, and Bob is definitely the same way. We're all get attracted. We attract these people to us that are just so like-minded. Um, but here's the thing. What makes se- separates us from the people who do quit is that yeah, we may not have had the community, say, in the past, but we're smart enough to create our own community like we did, Dave, to create our own community and, and, and do that ourselves. Like, yeah, that's what entrepreneurs do. They they find something that's lacking and then they create it. Just like um, if there's a, a, a certain training that you just you think you're missing or you don't have, well, create that. Like you have a problem, create the solution. Because you know that there's going to be more people with that problem, and you can be that solution for that particular part of person, for for those people, so that you can attract those people to your organization. So that's why I know that I knew the answer already, and I just wanted Jamie to say that. And I know that Dave, you are saying, "Oh, I want to disagree," but wait, no, wait. I, you know, I would have kept going. I saw that struggle, <laughs> so I, I just wanted to share that. No, I, I love the fact that you bring that up. I mean, you know, what you're saying is 100% true. Um, I just I think it makes it a lot easier when you're with people who believe the same thing. And for those of you who are watching, uh, we have kind of like a next level community where, where I'm just going to share this with and then I'll let Pop say something because I know he hasn't said much this whole time. But I just want to say that if, if you want to be involved with the community where we get you inside of a chat. It's a 24-hour chat. When I, I say 24 hours because we're all over the world and we're up at different times. And if you have a question or if you're struggling, you can go in there and say, hey, I'm struggling with this. Can somebody help me? And there's always somebody there to give you hard answers. You know, it's not show me, get on my computer and do it for me. We give you answers that are not easy to take. All right, These are straightforward answers. And this is why I say, you know, if you ever want to get somewhere in life, if you ask questions, you're going to get answers. But if you are in the right community, you're going to get answers that you maybe you don't want to hear. Someone's going to say to you, get on camera, start doing a blog, start uh, creating your own community, start creating your own workshop, start creating your own uh, following. We're going to be telling you this hard, fast truth. And the way you get involved in that chat is you go ahead and click on the button below, which is getting you started with My Lead System Pro. All right, go ahead. Get involved, sign up, go for the 10-day trial. Once you've gone through that 10-day trial, send a message to us, 
and say, I really want to be involved with the community, all right? Now, the next thing that happens is, We'll say, okay, you need to make a video and you need to put it into the special Facebook group. And the reason we do this is because we understand that if you want to take your business to another level, you need to start getting out of your comfort zone and making a video, which means you have to learn how to make your own video. We're not going to do it for you. We're not going to have a training session teaching how to make a video. All right, Joe McKenzie, who's watching this right now, we told him the same thing. And he's like trying to make this video, and then at the end of the day, he said, "You know what? I didn't. I made it was making it more complicated than it really was." And uh, this is why we tell you: make your own video. Get in there. You tell us who you are, why you want to join the workshop, solve your strengths and your weaknesses. The instructions are all there. Once you have made that video, we will transfer you to the 24-hour chat, which means you'll have access to all of us and be able to get on a training call. One-on-one -on -one training, you'll be able to get involved in our workshop on Saturday, and that will be an amazing thing that you can be a part of. But you need to be a part of Mighty System Pro by clicking on the link below this video. All right, it has to be in our group. All right, so that is the um, the criteria, and that will help you. That will stretch you. All right, and you know what? What Jamie is saying is true. You can you can go at your own pace, and there's nothing wrong with that. So if you want to go at your own pace for 20 years, that's fine. But if you want to start getting results, I want to tell you that you need to start stretching yourself, all right? You need to put aside $150 a month and say, this is going to be for my business. And if you're not working, get a job. Get a job and fund your business, all right? Because as Jim Rohn said, if you want to work on your dreams, you have to work full-time in your job so you can work part-time on your dreams to the point where you can switch things around. And I did the same thing. When I first got started, you need to remember this, that I was working. I was, and I wasn't just working for like a company. I went out to work for a friend of mine doing everything I could so I could fund my own business. And I did for as long as I could until I started getting results. All right, and don't think to yourself, well, if I just work for a month, I'll be able to get my money back. It doesn't work like that. And if you think like that, you need to either quit or you need to start thinking differently. And that is the truth. And we're telling you like it is. We're not going to be fucking this up to, to some hype thing where we're going to tell you you're going to be a millionaire in three months. It doesn't work like that. All right, we're going to tell you it's going to be hard work. We'll give you actual instructions. You'll have a whole toolbox of information inside of Mylet System Pro with 40 training modules, all right? That's that's hundreds of videos that you go through and you can start working towards your dreams. With that being said, uh, I want to give the floor a bit of pops because he hasn't said anything. Uh, and I have to say something to add to this conversation. Pops. Uh, thanks, Steve. Actually, I've been sitting here trying to think of a question for Jamie and... I actually can't think of an actual question that would be pertinent enough to your story, but I do want to make a comment, and that is the first time I met you, of course, as you said, was at the Gaylord, well, that's three, four years ago now, and from what I've seen, how much you've grown and how much you've invested in yourself, um, taking courses and working full-time, taking courses work in a part-time business and, you know, having your family and just busting your butt. That's what it takes to be successful in anything that you want to do. Um, and you're, you're an exemplary of what it is all about. Um, and really, I'm really proud and happy to know you and to, um, to learn from your example on how hard you work and how dedicated you are. Even your drive time back and forth to work, you fill that with lessons and, and learning by listening to audio. And there's not very many people that are that are gonna do that. They're gonna put on the frickin' radio and listen to tunes or something. Like I said, you're exemplary and, and it's awesome. I love you, I'm proud of you. And I know what Dave was talking about, the workshop, I want to throw a plug in for that, too, because uh, 
that's part of what helped you grow, me grow, Katie grow, Dave grow, and that's a big part of it, but actually not the major part. The major part is doing what you're doing, Jamie, and that's taking all of this in your own hands and molding yourself. We didn't help. We didn't do a lot of chipping. You did a lot of the chipping on your own, big time. Good job, man. Well, thank you so much, Bobs. You know, and, and I want the audience to know I could have very easily just skipped out tonight because, you know, my friends were worried about me over the weekend because my uncle passed away on Saturday, you know, and I know everybody wondered what the hell I was talking about with that Facebook post. You know, Katie was the first one to post on it. She knew what was going on, but she didn't know who it was. And, you know, then I posted it in our community chat what was going on. You know, my uncle was a big part of my life. You know, he taught me how to fish. He taught me how to go mushroom hunting. He taught me how to box, you know, and I boxed amateur when I was in the Air Force. He's the one that taught me how to box. You know, I took a lot of his big thumbs in the eyes learning how to box. <laughs> but, you know, he was, I was really close to him and, and I, he was, I thought he was older than he was, but he was only 61 years old. He's 11 years older than me. So the good thing is that he passed away in his sleep. So he, I knew he was suffering because he had a broken leg. He broke both of his legs this, this last year. So I knew he had been suffering. And, uh, you know, I I talked to him last year. And see, that's what that's what hurts him most is I hadn't gotten down to see him at the end of this year. In the end of 2017, I hadn't been down to see him at the first of the year. So I didn't get to tell him goodbye. And that's what hurts him most because he was my favorite uncle. But I could have very well, you know, Dave asked me yesterday, are you sure you'll be okay tomorrow night? Yeah, because you know why? I'm okay because I'm here with my friends, you know, and they give the love and support that I need for me to move on daily. So there's no giving up in my eyes. There's no giving up in my book. You know, if I'm a millionaire tomorrow, cool. You know, I don't have a backup plan and I don't need a backup plan because I'm doing what I love. Amen. And thank you, man. We appreciate you so much. And, with that being said, I just wanted to say to everybody here, uh, we're going to be here next week um, with another workshop. And this one's going to be kind of, it's going to be a twist at the end. Um, well, next week, you come on a board, a little surprise for you. And uh, so with that being said, we want to say goodbye. Thank you so much for being here. And don't forget uh, that Jamie has a work, uh, he, he has a, Hang out on Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, along with Maria and Sonia on Tuesday. And we will see you same time next week. Cheers. Bye-bye, everyone.